Well, I think I would start by thinking about the Paris Agreement because that's really changed the agenda for climate science now. Arguably, prior to Paris, there were two questions. Is the world warming? And if it is warming, is it due to human activities, burning of fossil fuels? The fifth assessment report of the IPCC absolutely nailed those questions. Warming is unequivocal and it's extremely likely that warming in the last 50 years is due to fossil fuel burning. And that's what set the evidence base for the Paris Agreement. So since Paris, now there's much more focus, I think, on precision. We are roughly one degree above pre-industrial now. So with an ambition to stay below two degrees, if not the more challenging target of 1.5, that's quite a small margin. So there's a, there's a requirement for climate science to project at a degree of accuracy that I don't think we had before. So that's one major challenge. Uh, the second is um, carbon budgets. Again, the precision required is at a whole different level of magnitude now. So again, the two parts to that. One is what scenarios might keep us below those levels, but the area where the Met Office really contributes is um, given emissions of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, how much stays in the atmosphere and leads to warming. At the moment, there's really quite a lot of uncertainty around that. So we recently published some work looking at some previously unrepresented effects like thawing of permafrosts, methane from wetlands, uh, aerosol interactions. And they all tend to reduce the amount of carbon we can release to keep us below the 1.5 degree, the 1 degree target. So I think that's a second area of massive requirement. And then the third is the we know we're committed to a changing climate over the next 30 or so years. Um, the question is, what will the character of the weather events we experience in that time, how will that character change? So we know we get heat waves now, we know we get flooding events, but will they become more frequent or will they become less frequent but more intense? What's the character of those events going to be like? And how will those hazards translate into real risks? So when it rains, what does that mean for flooding defences in the UK? When there is a drought, what does that mean for the kind of crops we might be able to grow in Southeast Asia, etc.? So that whole risk way of thinking around extreme events, I think, again, brings a new set of challenges to climate science that we didn't really confront before.